Good looking out, though. Yeah. Good, I wish I had better. Good looking out. It's like the the princess from Black Panther. Ooh la la. Ooh 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 ooh. You weirdo. Huh? What, what was the thing they kept saying? Ooh ooh. Yeah, they did have some sort of response ooh, like ooh. that. Some grunt. Yeah, that's my grunt if I get a hand of the princess. Chuck ooh, Chuck. Ooh. It's like hard to fight racism when they force them all to make that noise in the movies, right? Yeah, for uh, it's hard to be racist when they're all bootylicious, <laughs> bro. All right, and we are back. Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Welcome to another exciting episode of Vida y Vino, brought to you by the Bro Tastes Network. Boys, men, gods, and some Mexican Mayan cultures, which is what we're going to talk about at the beginning of the hour. The bros all went to the theater, to the theater, if you're French, and we caught a glimpse of the, uh, how, what are they called, Black Panda? Black, <clears throat> sorry, Black Panther. My fault. I was watching Kafu Panda last night, folks. Another classic. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. And then we're going to dive into some sad, unfortunate news and the passing of the late, great legacy of Kevin Conroy. And we're going to celebrate with a little bit of uh, sad news with the uh, stepping down of some political powers. But tune in to the end of the hour to see who stepped down. Welcome, boys. Welcome, welcome, everyone. I love that. What is that, your NPR voice? Yes. <laughs> welcome. To Code Switch with Sheena Shiraz. <laughs> and I am your host, Juan Bar La Leyenda. I have no testosterone in my system because testosterone is bad. And on top of the hour, today's sponsors are Soy Milk. Go Soy. Was that bad? No, yes. it was just yes. odd. I know I got too much testosterone to like get my, you know. Luis, bring yourself What's in, up? buddy. And you know uh, that hello. voice. Yeah, way to introduce everybody. We are rocking at full power. Are you going to bring in Luis? Oh, what? All right, let me do that again. God. No, just just go ahead. We'll keep it running. <laughs> we'll this, just keep it live. <laughs> see, folks, this is why I don't do these anymore. I like I'm telling There's you There's only 3 people. There's only There's three only of three us here. <laughs> well, and you forgot one. Technically, well, you know what? Technically, there's five of us. There's the four bros and our Lord Jesus Christ, or Allah. You Praise forgot Allah. to introduce him too, though. And probably the U.S. government. Bring him in, though. Bring him in. Bring, bring him in the government. Bring him in. Bring him in. <laughs> and you know that voice. It's the big tech daddy himself, 70 miles away, but still close in our hearts. It's Luis Pablo. Thank you for a while. What an introduction. Thank and, uh, It reminds me wait. of a boat, like a, like a bong. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> nice, a gong. Yeah. yeah. Nice little gong noise. And to my <laughs> left, or if you're dyslexic, to your right, it's... Juan, the truly it smells like patchouli. It's Juan La Leyenda. Oh, yeah. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, buddy. And Look. last but not least, someone who doesn't get enough credit off the camera is pulling most of the weight, the glue, the very structure, the full ride in our toothpaste. It is Leonardo El Caballero. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> and we're starting Did off we hot and heavy. Uh, nickname last week for him? Um, uh, I'm, I'm not too sure. I think. What was it, Luis? Do you remember? I can't remember off the top. See, of my head, if, if, that, if if we can't remember, then it's not that permanent. It wasn't memorable. Yeah. Was it memorable? It wasn't memorable enough. It wasn't memorable. I think I went oh, yeah. with Dahmer, but no, 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 no use. No, but we'll go back and listen to it. We'll um, we'll hit that when we get there. We'll hit that when we get there, but. I mean, what what are we doing now? Episode 61, 62? We've been doing that for 62 weeks this now. This is 62. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. 62 weeks. What is that, four months? No. Shut the fuck up. Shut <laughs> the fuck <laughs> up. I, I fucked up. I fucked up. Four months? I fucked up. <laughs> If you mean 62 episodes is two months worth of episodes, then yeah, someone could start... 
all the way in the beginning and listen to one every single day and that'll be too much that is exactly however, what he meant yes yeah however and even that was incorrect however <laughs> 62 weeks is a year and some change it's about a year and two months exactly the um over the line for late born term termination <laughs> what I, the fuck are you saying did i say that wrong what I think are, everything are you you've been saying is wrong. My apologies, folks. But are you drunk already? What the fuck? He is just going started. On? Bro, he just started. Honestly, folks, we are drinking delicious high noons. To pair that out, delicious with a white wine, whiter than the enemies of Black Panther. Yeah, what are you drinking there? Describe the wine. It's Deloach uh, Chardonnay. It's a 2020 Calif- out of California. <laughs> um, this particular one happens to be unoaked. So it should be pretty interesting that way. Ooh, interesting. You know, as uh, people are listening to this, they will be, you know, depending on when they listen to it, there'll be a couple days, if not the day of Thanksgiving. And there's actually some fun wines that they can think about buying uh, with to pair with their main courses. Uh, here we have a great website, uh, foodandwine.com slash uh, whatever the context is there, but they're recommending to enjoy a Chenin Blanc, a Rosé, a Grunier Veltliner, Champagne and Lambrusco. Those are wines that work well with everything on the table. Any uh, standout names that come out to you, Juan? Uh, I was going to say Chardonnay, actually. Which isn't Chardonnay a type of white wine, though? Yeah, I mean, that's what we're drinking right now. It's not I was gonna say it's, a brand. It's, it's very much in season right now. Um, I just, I yeah, when I drink uh, Chardonnays, I don't, I don't drink them a lot. But when I do drink them, it's like with heavy foods like that. You know, like to me, it's like the the heavy hitter of the white wine world. Mm. You know, like it's gonna be able to stand up to most food dishes. But yeah, it's uh, also one that people typically know very well. Exactly. It's like the uh, the Cabernet of the white wine world. Yep. Right up there with champagne for a celebration wine. Nice little bottle of Chardonnay. It even sounds fancy, too. To Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. to me, I would probably go with, like, the unoaked stuff or, like, some French stuff. Um, I would probably try to stay away from anything that's been aged in California. But that's just because... Because yeah. of the liberals? I, no, I'm just not into... Um, the super oak, uh, like taste that's like very typical to California or Chardonnays. Mm-hmm. Yeah, one that stood out to me on the list was Lambrusco. It's interesting that that one is being recommended as one that goes with everything. Yeah, it's a sweet red, right? It's a, it's a very sweet red, and you know, I, the times that I've enjoyed it has been like typically in the summer when I still want to drink red wine, but enjoy something a little bit lighter. I just find it like if you're gonna enjoy with everything. I guess you also have to include dessert because for Thanksgiving, yeah, you're enjoying like the main course and you're enjoying appetizers, whatever, you know, mac and cheese or uh, potato mash that they're serving. But then, yeah, you also got to think about, oh, if you're going to eat a slice of pie and then go back to turkey, like you're going to need something that goes very well with all of them. So I I thought that was a, a good shout out that I didn't necessarily think about as well as. The listeners, if they're going to host a party, hey, like a Lambrusco might be a, a good choice for everyone. Mm, now, you mentioned on the top of the list that uh, uh, Goutonier, ain't that a type of cheese? That is a type of cheese, Phil. Also Great a type observation. Of wine? Also a type of wine. By yeah. God, they got cheese made out of wine? You're so smart, dude. You've Bro, got like brain falling actually, out your nose. I'm pretty the, cultured. The, <laughs> the wine that is mentioned is actually Gruner Veltliner. That's, that's what I was talking about. Uh, Gruner Veltliner is a very, uh, it almost appears green in appearance. Um, And it's often described very citrusy, very light. Um, It is similar to Riesling, but they are not the same. And you heard it here, folks. You can get yourself a bottle of John Gruten's bottle wine. Perfect for any Thanksgiving. Not what I said whatsoever. <laughs> John Gruden's Pacific Chardonnay brand. But, you know, honestly, guys, following up from last week with the Portlandia uh, red wine from the Bigfoot bottle, this tastes like cat piss. <laughs> I am not a big fan <laughs> of this. But, you there know, is wine described as cat piss. So is that 
Juan as you know the that's typically person. like a, a Sav Blanc thing, like but but it's funny that you can tell that with these. I don't know, interesting or the Chardonnayzel. Yeah, mm. I was even aware How would you that describe this wine that Cappy was even a categorized uh, in wine for Savant Blanc. A very big theme when it comes to certain wines. I would probably say including, like including uh, you know, go on, Luis. Including like uh, the other big one when it comes to white wines is like tennis balls. Oh yeah, tennis balls. But was yeah, that like, was that just a thing from the Psalm movie though? No, no, no. The, the is that really a Psalm trend? Movie, yes. When it comes to tennis, tennis like freshly popped open tennis balls. Um, but they they were talking the one that they were referring to was like it tastes like rubber. It smells like a rubber hose. What do you smell? Yeah, what are you guys smelling? Describe the wine visually. Wait, is this one that people? Oh my god! Honestly, this reminds me of my ex after like. Look at? Honestly, this reminds me of like. Do we have anything white? Let me see that piece of receipt. Thank yeah, get a piece of paper. There you go. All right, right. Ooh, it's what uh, does it look like? It's a for the for the audio uh, listeners. Pale yellow, ladies and gentlemen. Wait, wait. For the audio wait. listeners, what are you doing, Juan? NPR Wine Club voice. It's a pale yellow over here. Great long legs. What else? What else? So I'm, help I'm, me out. I'm very confused. What do you here. smell? What Hold do you on. smell? Wait, wait, wait. Why why white piece of paper? Because you gotta get a true look at the color. Like if I hold it up in the air, I'm gonna look at it against an orange backdrop. Bro, what are we still in the independence? Bro, what are we, Nicolas Cage? What color do you see? What what Juan is doing for those who aren't looking is you want a piece of paper or like something white you hold it down that is not easy to see through. So you typically want to use like a piece of paper in good lighting and you want to hold the wine up against it so that you can see fully just how clear the wine is and really see the true color of it. And this will give you a good understanding of what wine it is and also what it might taste like to prepare you. Bro, is this how they Happiness. fucking sell chips back then? Magnifying glasses, they see like very far from this because this is oh, bonkers, no. dude. See, to to me, this wine drinks like some of my favorite Pinot Grigios, but like without without the overly citrus or acidic note, like on a much more round, soft. But it also is missing that citrus that like some people love in their white wines. Yeah, very is, dry. Not yeah, very dry. It's, uh, the citrus taste that's messing it. It's like yeah, there's, it's just kind of like dry, like minerally, uh, very neutral in taste. There's like a creamy thing to it, though. Like there's like something silky in the mouth. Oh, but you, would not, you would not recommend this to be enjoyed on Thanksgiving. Well, if you guys are looking for something silky in your mouth, I can potentially lead you to somewhere else. For uh, for that, but I would not recommend this wine. I I would okay. fuck with it on Thanksgiving. Yeah, it it has a lot of like oomph to it, so it could stand up to. I, I've seen people's cooking out here. It ain't it ain't that bold, you know. Like <laughs> you've seen people's cook. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, it ain't that bold for most in most families, you know, like. It, it, it'd okay. do fine. I mean, and the price value yeah. for this guy ain't that too much neither. So, I mean, yeah. Can can you look this up, uh, Leo? Uh, Deloach Private Collection Chardonnay. That is eighteen ninety nine. Eighteen? You saw it? Eighteen. All right. Oh, no, I didn't see it. Oh, no. that is that is a bargain. Is it the twenty? That one? is a 2020. bargain. Twenty twenty. Uh, they're like from sixteen dollars to twenty dollars. Oh, that's not bad. I yeah, was so I was, like, I was just guessing. Your, your guesstimate was right on. Oh yeah. That you know, great. honestly, if I was right about this, that I probably was right about Black That's Panther, cool. I could probably marry all the Shut up. all no, the soldiers. Let's uh, th let's talk about that. What Bro. do we think about the movies? Yeah, we uh, we all went to go see Black Panther. All four of us have seen the the movie, correct? Yes. Correct. And no, wow, okay. I was uh, with, I, I haven't seen the first it, one. Let's hear your initial thoughts. I didn't see the first one, so I was a little bit lost at, at words. It was like, damn, this dude's dead. What the hell? They had a cool, like, you know, little ceremony thing. It's like, is this for all the fallen warriors or is this for their, for the king? For the king. I was a little confused at the end or like ancestors and shit. I was like, is this Lion King? But, you know, I, 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 I put it together. Yeah, because you, if you would have watched the first movie, you would have learned that, like, 
um, when they take the flower, it becomes like a ceremony where they like get the wisdom of their ancestors, like imparted onto. Them. Oh, that's what that was, yeah. dude. I thought they were just getting yeah, like high their powers. I yeah. thought they were like, dude, you want to trip? Do you want to see the world? Yeah, yeah, I can see why you thought that. Yeah. Damn. So did you enjoy the movie at all? Yeah, no, definitely. We like uh, I I saw it uh, with with my good friend over here, Juan, Juan La Leyenda. Okay. And uh, uh-huh. yeah, no, it was. Uh, I went in there with very low expectations. I thought it was going to be a a, a, a liberal uh, hit piece. This is them. Why did ta- you think it was going to be a liberal hit piece? Well, when they introduced Bilbo Baggins as the colonizer, I was like, he's a fucking hobbit. He's not a colonizer. He didn't do anything to you guys. He was out in the Shire. He didn't want to leave the Shire. So I was a little pissed off. They kept referring to my boy as a colonizer, but I, I, I digress. Swallowed I, your pride. Swallowed my pride. And bro, bro, I was that the girl from Haiti, Haiti, Haitian, Haiti, Lupita. The, Lup, that's her name, I Lupita. Yeah. Was she the former boo of the Black Panther? Yeah. Bro, he's got great taste. I was lost at words. I was like, what is she doing, Haiti? That's not Wakanda. You guys know she's Mexican? She's Mexican? Well, I, think she's, I think she studied in Mexico. I don't think she's Mexican. No, she was born in Mexico City. Oh, was she? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Like, can, can you look Kenyan, up the cast though. for uh, Black Panther, see if any of them has got an OnlyFans? Because <laughs> I, th- I think I have a type now. <laughs> I think I have a type. For two hours. Okay, first things first. <laughs> The movie runtime of that is a little bit too long for my liking. Yeah, it was a little long. A little it long. was a little long. If they were to cut the funny cheesy parts and just add in more like them fighting or them like, you know, doing playing marbles or whatever they do in their free time. The Panthers. All right, Luis, what was your thoughts on the movie? Uh, this movie was fun. It was good. It uh, represented Mayan and Aztec culture very well. However, some of the CGI was dog shit. Some of the character development was pretty shitty. And uh, they really, it went on for a very long time. I think the total runtime is like two and a half hours. Yeah, it's like, yeah, two hours and like 40, 30 minutes around their time. It is way, two hours and 41 minutes. It is so long. And they're trying to introduce so many things and introduce this character. Um, and I was just like, God damn. Like, See, if I had to be I, nitpicky, I, the one thing I was not a big fan of the movie was the way that they de- depicted the way to get into Wakanda. I was like, you know, it's this big force field. It's impenetrable by the American government. The French people are looking for them. They're like the, the number one. They're North Korea. They're bad people in the eyes of the world. <laughs> you know, they're very this deadly. This would make way more sense had you seen the first one. <laughs> <laughs> the whole point of the first one is like we live in a secret society and if we let this vibranium get out into the world then it's only going to be bad yeah yeah right? but, the, but the, the whole it's like it's like the equivalent of like nuclear weapons technology but the way to get into wakanda is you got to play a funky beat like they're like doing the yeah, special that, move from donkey kong that i like, did not like they pull out the bongos and scenes there was very specific scenes in this one that I was like, why did they do that? Because there were scenes in the first one. There's this awesome scene in the first one where they introduce Wakanda mm-hmm. by like flying this plane. And all you see is like mountains. You don't see anything. And Chadwick Boseman says, this is my favorite part. I never get tired of this. And they fly in past this force field. And then you get to see like, they call it Afrofuturism. What? That's and what they call it? Like, yeah, the, like the city and the, like the type of like, yeah, it's, it's like a certain theme in, in sci-fi. Um, oh, and then you man. see this like awesome city. And then, yeah, in the in the second one, by the way, we need to put like a big spoiler warning because um, <laughs> we just it spoiled the entire thing. But in this one, yeah, like you said, there's a specific scene where these two dudes are playing the drums in order to let the force field open. And my first thought in my head was, what if you don't feel like playing the drums that day? <laughs> what if you don't got the same like, rhythm, the same beat? What if you miss the? Uh, yeah, you what if you mess song? it up? Like, yeah. You can't get and it. And they're just day. flying in and doesn't <laughs> open like, up. Don't fucking bang! <laughs> <laughs> like, what if you? What if you're just having a bad day? And, and you resort like, to knocking. <laughs> Will anyone yeah. be there to open it? Can you call? Did they get phone service? Right. 
like are you able to just be like hey man like i'm just gonna tap it today like can we just do it the old fashioned way where we just like turn the key or something or like they give us a call but yeah it's just like elaborate music scene for no reason there's also there okay so the character uh namor played by teno huerta is this awesome character both in the comics and in the movie and it's a great representation of mexicans because they're actually showing them as you know the the four of us uh you know, which are dark-skinned mexicans and very very, very toxic to be in a relationship because towards at the end, I was yeah, like, "Speak about yourself, bro." Bro, like I was like, "What am yeah, I watching? Am I watching a Marvel movie, <laughs> or if I'm watching an episode of Jerry?" It's like a Mexican dude beating up this like beautiful black lady. Like, why is no one stepping in? No, honestly, like, <laughs> I wish that they showed his powers a little bit more because yeah. they only showed it like his actual powers in like one scene when they attacked Wakanda. Totally. Yeah. He's literally yeah. one of the most powerful Marvel characters that has ever made. And they only showed him strong one time. After that, they just showed him like flying around and like hitting people. And no, he's like literally like making tidal waves and like taking down cities. But when he was fighting the big ship, he's just flying around it. It's like, dude, you can take down the whole ship. He's like one of the most Fly right through ones. it. Yeah. He's just like a better, cool looking Aquaman. But I can yeah, fly though. That's, that's what, what I was telling. He was the original Aquaman. That's what I was telling like, Phil. Uh, this guy came out before Aquaman. He might have been the actual first superhero, because in the first, like, very first, like, superhero comics, he was the one there. It was like three more that nobody ever heard of after that. Damn. You hear that? And after the Serpent God, I don't know how like true that plays into like the get him, Leo. The Ku Klux Klan. How do you say that? Ku Klux Klan. Ku Klux Klan. They call him Cuckoo Clan. Cuckoo uh, yeah, Clan. back to Leo's point. But his enemies call Namor him Namor. <laughs> Which, by the way, the whole like backstory. I hated. I did not like scene. the backstory. I was like, hated do you know? That. Do you know why they call me Namor? It's because when I was a child, it was because I did not feel love. I'm like, get the, what? Get the <laughs> what the fuck? It's like who did? That He's like flirting so with like the hottest though. girl from Wakanda. He's talking about like Shuri. Shuri, the princess Shuri. She was the hottest one? Bro, I would lay down on any sword for Shooty. I don't think Shooty's laying down on any sword. For my for my presents. Yeah, that, I don't think she does. I don't think you're her type, bro. I don't think you're uh Bro. You're She's all about that that uh nobility. Do you think you could uh have a threesome with two of the of the uh Melange? Who's the Melange? The, the guards, protectors of the Black Panther. Yeah, all the guards. They, Bro, they I would I would hook up with the lesbians, the ones that were kissing <laughs> at the end. I'd be like, let me slide in, baby, <laughs> baby. I don't even got to. I don't even got to join in. I'll be in the back. I'll be in the kitchen. Yeah, I'll that dinner was very subtle. They were like, oh, I, just at the end, they were just showing like holding hands, and you're like, oh, this was. I guess it's like meant to be like normalized. But it just felt like they really panned on them. Wait, and so was that a thing in the first movie? Were they like, you know, giving no, them like little wink no. eyes? Like, are we going to fight no. or are we going to fuck? <laughs> no. <laughs> kind of. You didn't was. get that, bro? Uh, I, I kind of got that vibe the whole time. All, both movies. Damn. That, no. that like the the female guard w- were like, like butch lesbian types. Yeah, the Melange. I think they're called the Melange. I'm, yeah, but, I, I, was, I wasn't familiar. I thought with you were that. being That's, racist. I thought you were being old yeah, racist. Yeah, I thought you were. I thought you were using like a French term for a threesome. To be honest, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a menage. Menage. The, oh, the Dora Melange. The Dora Melange. That's what they're called. The Dora Melange. I was. See, if you would have said that, I would have understood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but those are the guards. But yeah, no, they're cool as fuck. Um, I think all the actors do a really good job. And uh, not to harp on this movie for too much, but it, it is a, a good tribute to Chadwick Boseman and uh, the post credit scenes definitely did make me cry. That was uh, that was kind of powerful. That was, really yeah. that was very powerful. Yeah, that, that one kind of fucked. I was like holding a strong on movie and then, you know, not to keep spoiling it, but they show a uh, potential Black Panther in 10 to 15 years. And you're just like, God damn it. Like God damn! Like why do they got to do that to me? That was pretty cool. And such a handsome little kid. The when he was smiling with his dimples, I was like, oh, dude, they could so have not cute, picked huh? a better kid. And I was like, damn, I wish I had dimples. God damn yeah. it, dude, for real though, yeah, they're like huge, adorable, adorable. Mm-hmm. It was uh, it was sweet. And then yeah, I thought so. 
here. Let's 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 move on from this. This is we're we oh, yeah. been on Black Panther we're, for a we're, while, but we're gonna we're gonna move on from Marvel to the world of DC. DC Comics. I was gonna say, oh, I was gonna say uh, one before. one last note. Even mm. if you're not like a big uh, superhero fan, I feel like this movie um, builds on universes in like a really a really fun visual way that can be like you can be almost like a, approach this like a fantasy movie. You know what I mean? There's like a lot of magical shit going on, and stuff like that. So like I I feel like you can kind of view it from that angle and like if you're not into superhero movies like cuz i have avoided like most of them what's so fantasy about this movie the fact that they have like good family relationships <laughs> or like what are you trying to say here yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> he meant no but to to Juan's point it's i it's not a marvel movie that feels like it's a marvel movie yes. it definitely is like it feels like it's its own thing which not a lot of the marvel movies are there's only a handful that stand on their own but this one was you don't need to have watched the first one. You kind of get it. And then if you have watched the first one, you probably just need to watch this one. Yeah, I didn't watch the first one, and I enjoyed it. And if you yeah. like, if you have a thing for, like, you know. You don't have to. Powerful you black have, woman. You don't have to say it. If you, don't got, if you got a thing for powerful powerful Wakandians, bro, yeah. this is it. Do you think uh, the porn categories skyrocketed? With like BBC and Ebony and Ivory, <laughs> after I, the movie I, came honestly, out. Honestly, I don't think they need to go to porno. At the, the theater we went to, they had like honestly six different showings going at once about Black Panther. <laughs> now, do keep in mind, geographically speaking, are I, you suggesting people go j- jerk off in public? <laughs> what are you saying? Why? <laughs> Pull a Pee Wee Herman. I mean, you're paying it. You're paying for it. <laughs> well, look at your money's worth. That's a different topic. That's for the Patreon. We'll talk about times yeah. we jerked off in the movie theater. Have you guys ever done the uh, popcorn trick? Cut I, a hole at the bottom of the popcorn? No. Nah, I have not. jacked off zero times in a movie theater. And we'll save that for the Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, when you see Jennifer Lawrence on TV, you, what do you do? <laughs> Your body just <laughs> takes over. What do you do? Have you jerked off in a movie theater, Phil? And we'll save that for the Patreon. Have you? you no, 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 no. Have you? Yes or no? We'll save that for the no, bonus no, content. Answer right now. No, answer the question. I, I will say this without answering and incriminating myself. So, yes. I <laughs> so, yes, you have. I have pleasured myself in many places. A movie theater is not one of them. Her, this guy a movie a theater? Part. Okay, what's the worst part? What's the worst place you've uh, jerked off in public? Uh, <laughs> I guess. I guess. <laughs> the worst place. When I, when I, now, hold on. When I was going through when puberty. When I was a young warthog. When I was a young warthog. I was about okay. 15, 16. I didn't have Wi-Fi. I had an iPhone, though. Uh, not an iPhone, an iPod. So I would go to the library, uh, download where I needed to download, save it so I can go back home. But sometimes you watch, you, you find another video that catches your eye. You're like, I don't want to waste it for this and not come back and save it for the other video. So I, I I have, when I was young, jerked off in the public library, <laughs> which is connected which is connected to a police station, <laughs> which is connected oh, to a so police gross. station. That's oh. our tax dollars right there. What? <laughs> There's a tax yeah, dollars going all over the bathroom. Dude, wall, you're like wall. at least you're like the people at the public methadone clinic. I was like 15. Oh, rock hard. I was like, oh my god. You fucking sex addict, you freak. I can save you, Princess Peach. But uh, yeah, I guess that Are would you have glad to be you the got most that answer, Luis? the most shameful I place I've I done it. Yeah, yeah. Most shameful. God, place. The public library. Yeah, it's just it's just this is sweaty, smelly teenage what boys about just you? jerking it. What about you, bro? I stay at home or wherever I sleep over the whole time. I don't That's need. It? I don't need to get like edgy with that. You've never done it, edgy. You never or like in, in the shower, like you've never done it oh at like God. the like. I like I know you, you and your family. I you, got time at home. I'll just. You never done it at the hotel room with your family, like sleeping or anything like that. There's no way, dude. Like Fred sleepover, five guys in one room. Get the fuck out of here. You've never done that. No, I've never done that. Bro, dude, I jerked off at your bachelor party, and we shared beds. Shut the fuck up, Lise. Why do you think I had to leave in the morning? Oh, you know what? You guys, did, you guys did share the beds. You're a disgusting remember. animal. 
I felt left out. Or, I was like, Let where me else in. did you? Had, where else did you do it, Luis? Uh, probably Walmart parking lot. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's that's uh, way so more busy. shameful than that's I. So busy in the public library, I was, dude. I was hot to trot, and I was just like <laughs> your imagination, just like right there and then. Oh my and god! And then my parents came back with their groceries, and they're like, "All right, let's go." No, Wait, please. you were doing a grocery run? Yeah, they were inside getting groceries, bro. And you're. I was just in the parking lot, like you're a pig. Stop, you know, you're bro. Just, they they probably opened up the van and was like, "Why does it smell like?" Oh fucking? my god, it reeks in here. <laughs> you're just out of breath, like, oh, "Hey, <laughs> why is it so crackle? Why are you sweaty? <laughs> hey, we need to go home now." God, that's so scary. I've never been caught by my parents. Oh, cross your fingers. Yeah, same. I've been caught yeah, multiple times by my exes, and that's always a fight. By your exes? <laughs> that that seems that way worse. <laughs> that, is, that is always a fight. How was that? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there yes. is. Why did you just... <laughs> okay. But, uh, yes. What were you... What were you going to say? Sorry, Papa. What were you doing? What were you doing that... They, like, they didn't want to, like, slip you some ass or something? Or what happened? Oh, no, it was just uh, the different ladies that I've seen, I've been in relationships with, have been very, yeah. um, either A, conservative to the Muslim degree, or conservative to the Republican degree. And uh, it's just the porn, just the, like, am I not good enough for you? <laughs> uh-huh. like, yeah. you like, why does this harlot gotta take, gotta get you off, but I can't? <laughs> Do you not love me? Was, was and, the... And the, the worst position that I've been caught in... So I was uh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. There's more than one. <laughs> there, I've been caught a couple of times. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh, it's not I'll good. To be exact. So I was on vacation with my boo at the time. I was in uh, Acapulco seeing my grandmother. Right. This is a very, very, pul- very private story that I'm sharing with all thirty <laughs> of you guys. So be very happy. <laughs> be very happy. <laughs> But I'm out there seeing my grandma. I uh, I'm seeing this Malaysian chick. We're going a little bit more serious at this time. I'm like well, I'll meet you. I'll introduce you to my family. So we're in there, uh, Acapulco. I'm staying at my grandma's house. Uh, she has two stories. I'm staying upstairs, and uh, we uh, it's hot as shit. So you wake up, you sh- you cool yourself down, shower down, and you know, she didn't go in the shower with me. So I thought I had a little bit of private time with me <laughs> so you know it's it's a mexican shower so the tiles are there exposed there's not much you know protection going on there's so no curtains usually exactly there's no curtains it's just a big it's just an open room shower drain i'm not gonna middle. lie i fucking love those showers it's so, so comfortable it, it's just so comfortable I until your girlfriend walks it. in and she's like what are you doing yeah but like that's what you got a lock for and bro when she came in because like one thing, all right. This is very, very like, private. Were you caught? Were you caught with the with the cook with your hand in the cookie jar? So when I jerk off, I have to like be in. That's another reason why my calves are so great. I have to be like in my tippy toes. <laughs> I have to be on my tippy toes to get that full like, like oh, oh that 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 grunt that is going. So graphic. That grunt going right. So she walks into the shower. <laughs> I'm Blair Witch style. I'm in the corner, just like, <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, way. I'm Blair Witch style, dude. I'm in the corner, just like, oh in the God. showers. <laughs> you didn't, you didn't hear the door pop open. There is no door. Oh, we're, there was no. We're in Mexico, dude. I mean, there's still oh doors in the bathrooms. God, it's scary. No, <laughs> not in Acapulco, bro. That's why I'm scared. Like, yo, I, I here's over here. You're like, I prefer it that way, dude. Leo, Leo, didn't we together. have doors in the bathroom? Yeah, there's doors and bathrooms in Mexico, even. No, oh no, 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 God, no. dude. It's uh, yeah, I was caught in Blair Witch style, so. Uh, but on to lighter news. We're gonna go on to the topic of Kevin Conroy. I don't think we can transition <laughs> from that into <laughs> that topic. I think we need to work our way up, man. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, oh no, that, that's God. definitely gotten me in a couple of arguments. Uh, my um, my horniness. Because yeah, what do you say afterwards? What do you are you like? No, 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 <laughs> baby, just, it's not you. I'm just I'm just an animal. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> baby, I'm baby, I ba- baby, please, ba- I love I'm you. I'm mentally baby. unstable. <laughs> I love you, baby. Please, please, please. You just gotta talk him down. Like yeah. you're you're my world, but look. Sure, Ab- Ab- Abigail Mac is uh, some crazy, crazy porn star. 
She's she's not real. You're real, baby. Baby, you're genuine. See, that's how you talk it down. Oh. <laughs> you fucking weirdo. And Does that work for you? No. Eight <laughs> times out of ten, they're like, yeah, shut up. So. <laughs> you're a pig. I did not think so. I can't yep. believe, you know. What if your mom was doing this? So you, like one of the another wait, arguments. Wait, 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 what, what argument is that? The I've argument never heard that one. She would try to shame me, or I have been shamed before. Of like, that's disgusting. Don't you know? Like, what if that was your uh-huh. sister? What if that was your mother doing that? I was like, well, like I wouldn't, getting, I wouldn't be watching double it. Double penetrated? Is that what they're referring? To? Yeah. Like, are they saying that? Like making yeah. the porn? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're saying that lawfully or like morally. How can I watch this stuff? To a point, they got a point. They I got would it. disagree with that. I think there's a better argument to be made. I don't think that one's it. Of of the like, anti, we're not going to shame. We're not gonna sh- yeah, Tell we're not going to shame. Sex workers Tell them on this why. Podcast. Because that's a terrible argument. It's like, what if that was your mother doing it? It's like, well, I would scroll past and click on the next video. Like, <laughs> why, why do you have to use that as a reference? I knew that one answer was coming. I would click on somebody else's mother. <laughs> yeah, you're like, well, <laughs> Clearly, that is someone's mom. Clearly, that is someone's sister. Like, mm-hmm. they're doing these videos are going to get made regardless. Yeah, you know, might as well. You know, it, it's true what they say. You you date the closest thing that resembles you, and a lot of the girls that I dated were very insecure about their bodies, and well, they had no reason to because most of the girls I dated were smoke shows. Very, a very nice way to save grace. Way to save grace. Are very nice. Uh, I couldn't watch Game of Thrones for a while. I'm sure I talked about this on different podcasts, but uh, no, you didn't talk about this. Yeah, one of the shows because at the moment Game of Thrones was like, bro, you gotta watch Game of Thrones. It's what, fucking the most hot. recent one. Was it, no, no, no. Uh, this is a uh, like second season to like. Was it the Don't okay. Eat Pork Girl that told you to oh, not yeah, do that? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I would try watching. Why like, did you tell you good, not to watch it? It's a good show. She's like, it's just for porn. You just watch it for the porn. It's like. I'm sorry that every other like thirty minutes is a dick and a vagina on the show, but like. By the way, it's not, it's not that bad. And like half the time, the scenes that they're showing you is of two siblings, and it's like, look at how messed up this is. Look how much they love each other, and you're meant to feel really uncomfortable. And when you have that context, you're like, oh, this is horrendous. Like these people are animals. Animals, but like I mean, at the yeah. same time. I have no right to complain because I too was also insecure. You know, if they would have got like a nice compliment or, you know, uh, I I can't honestly can't think of a good a good reason. <laughs> I'm just trying to stay face so I don't bury my exes. <laughs> you know, are you are you a jealous person? I would say so. Yes, very yeah, much so. All right, let's say let's say Juan is your girl and I'm uh, I'm me. All right, you guys are on a date having coffee. Hey, what's up, you dumb slut? You want to come with me instead? Who, me? You talking to me or my boo? I'm, I'm talking to you. Shut up, bitch. I'm talking to your girl. Hey, you fucking dumb idiot slut. You want to just ditch this bozo and come with me? No, he did say shut up, bitch. So if you did honor that, that's respecting him. So that's okay. <laughs> because he is a man. And in Allah's world, you got to respect the man. So a conversation would probably have gone like that. All right, then I'm, I'm yeah, going with Luis. You fucking weirdo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> what, kind, what kind of ben, like Ben Shapiro bullshit was that, dude? <laughs> yeah, what kind of beta attitude is that? All right, Juan, roles reverse. Now you're you, I'm me, and Phil's your cum bucket. <laughs> well, don't refer to me as a cum hey, uh, bucket. That, are hey, you going to let him talk up, to me girl? that way? You Wait, I thought me I was picking bucket. you up. Motherfucker, you're yeah, defending yeah, me. Yeah. yeah, you're defending him. Yeah, let's see how a real alpha would take go. care of this. Go. You guys are on a date. He's just calling me a Juan cum bucket. in the bathroom. Shut the fuck up for two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna let him talk to me that way? <laughs> Dude, yeah, Luis, you can't call my yeah, cum bucket shoot. a cum bucket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how would you handle... Juan, how would you handle... I've never seen you actually... Uh, I've seen you in public many times. We've hung out, you know, a good amount. Um, I've never seen you in that position before. How would how would you handle it, or how have you handled it? That's tough. I mean, I can't really think of of all the times that I've been in a relationship. One instance that that has happened to me. Usually, it's like me like complimenting other girls, and then 
me getting in trouble for like what? She had a good smile. I'm out in public. I'm not trying to fuck her. I'm just saying she has a pretty smile. <laughs> Hey, hey, everybody! I'm still Dude, single, every, by the every way. Every day, every day you surprise me one more. By the way, I'm still single. No, but I, I Luis, to answer that, dude, like, please, honestly, um, I kind of have a lot of trust in my significant other. So, like, when something like that occurs, like, I kind of know that they're gonna brush it off, and then they're usually like made uncomfortable by those sorts of advances, and then they gravitate towards this, like. Like the comfort of being around you, because like again, they were usually just made uncomfortable by those sort of advances. So like usually that's how that goes. What about you, Papa? You've been in a situation like that where you had to like, what's this, motherfuckers? What did yeah, this guy I'll, say? Uh, I'll, th- I'll threaten to to fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> you go prison rules on their ass. <laughs> Yeah, really. Like, you better hey, not drop like, hey, the soap, up, bitch. <laughs> I'll be like, "Oh, you trying to, you trying to mess around? You trying to grind? You trying to dance with my dance with me instead?" And uh, that, I, you know, honestly, th- I like that approach. <laughs> that that throws them for a loop. They're they're nine times out of ten, they're not expecting that. I would say ninety nine times out of hundred, they're not expecting that. Bro, that's a true alpha. Like, oh man, no, I'm not. I'm not trying. To, I'm like, no, dude. What's up? You horned up. Me too. Let's 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 get out of here. Let's fuck you and me. Bro, you think and she's pretty? Uh, yeah. Wait till you get a hold of me, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are you hitting on her? <laughs> we were looking That's at each other all night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Damn. There was one incident uh, a couple of years ago, probably two or three years ago, where uh, I went out to um, a nightclub in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which is uh, very. Uh, I don't think it's there anymore. I think it's called something else. But at the time, it was called District. And I was with uh, my fiance and uh, three other girls. So there was four girls total. And I was the only guy that had gone. Um, and I was just like on security duty the whole time. And yeah, when you go with girls league. like that, you feel like a security guard. Yeah, you feel like you're the, 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 yeah. the head hen. Kind of feel like a meat shield. Yeah. yeah, you feel and you know. Oh, my life's dispensable. Times, <laughs> what, bitch? I might accomplish great things. <laughs> You're, you go full mother. Hey, that's why we get the extra pay. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why we get. The, we we earn the extra thirty cents in the yeah, dollar. That's why we get the extra thirty cents. <laughs> yeah, dude. It, dude, it it was very. There was a there was a couple of times where I'm like, this could not end well, and I saw guys try to fight each other. Yeah, every time I see that like, happen, I call it a night. Because many times I'm the yeah, chaperone dude. too. I'm just like, I'm not here for that bullshit. I don't have a gun. We're leaving. Like, let's go. Yeah, dude, it was bad. There was like guys trying to dance with like um, the three other girls because they were just like we were kind of like in a small circle together. And each time a guy would try to approach, she would like turn their back and like try to like go towards me. And like I was trying to shuffle this shit, and it was like. Uh, dude, it was a very tough night to handle. I don't think I could do that shit again. It yeah. was, bro. It sounds like you were playing very, defense the whole yeah, night. Bro, that like, sounds like you, <laughs> yeah, passing defense, <laughs> passing guard. There's just bop, bop. You were like an offensive uh, lineman say, trying to ex- trying to stop them from yeah, getting to the quarterback, bro. <laughs> I was essentially playing safety, and like every time the fucking quarterback would launch the ball, I just have to be like, Le- no, <laughs> no, yeah, pass interference, <laughs> flag on the play. Um, but one thing that helped me out that night was my previous uh, tip, which was I tr- I would try to dance with the dude, and they would immediately look at me, and then be like, <laughs> oh, clearly he's he's the gay token, and they would just walk away. Wait, I'd really? Like, you right, would do that? Works. Yeah, yeah, and it worked every time. Okay. What if you try to dance with you back? Then you got then you're stuck. <laughs> uh, yeah, honestly, Leo, yeah. <laughs> then I gotta come in and be like, "Well, ladies, find your own way home." <laughs> so handsome stud. Like, don't worry, I gotta ride. Buy me drinks. <laughs> yeah, you guys, uh, I'll meet you guys back at the ha- apartment. <laughs> I'm gonna, he's, I'm gonna he's, enjoy he's, myself. He's gonna show me his aquarium at his Dude, apartment. The king of improv, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> like, the king of improv. Yes and gotta, yes and. He's trying to. He, he like shows Jeffrey up Dahmer. the next day he's without like, his shoes on. He's carrying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got my shoes in my hands. Got my. I got my shirt wrapped around my waist. <laughs> oh my god! How was your guys' night? Like, like, what the fuck, dude? dude <laughs> you you didn't have to, to commit that hard. <laughs> yeah. Like, what do you mean? I was trying to keep you guys safe. He was gonna fuck you guys instead, so I took one for the team. <laughs> but he lost interest like four songs ago. No, yeah, no, he no. Was, yeah. <laughs> he, he'll come I back know, around. Yeah, he was I, like I had to make boy. sure. I had to make sure. 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And uh, just like I took that guy home that night, Pete Davidson is once again up to no good. Uh, I did send you the link if you want to pull this up. Yeah. Bro, how uh, does he do it, though? Oh, dude, yeah, I you forgot. Won't He's got a 10 inch dick. That's all you, you need. this one either. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware of uh, the model made famous from the video Blurred Lines with Robin Thicke and Pharrell and T.I. Oh, that was uh, her. Emily Ratajkowski. Ratajkowski. Exactly. And she was in the movie Gone Girl. She's uh, the teacher oh, that the... Uh, yeah, the movie Gone Girl. You know what's funny? Because Ben Affleck what? directed that movie, right? And he specifically picked yeah. Emily Ratajkowski as like the, <laughs> as the person he has an affair with. She's like, yeah, he, I just got a call. And it's like, we want you for this role. That's great, man. <laughs> like, That's like in the movie Chef, uh, John Favreau's uh, ex-wife is Scarlett Johansson. And you're like, yeah, I'm sure she is. <laughs> yeah, she, 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 sure. she really loves Cabanero. I'm sure that's why yeah, she's exactly. in that relationship. I thought, yeah, his, really I thought the ex-wife sandwich. was Sofia Vergara, bro. No, that's well. Okay, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Well, yeah, Sofia yes, Vergara was the ex-wife, and then Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson's the girl that the new oh, girl, girl, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. Uh, yes, that is correct. Yeah, even more. Yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah, Sofia yeah, Vergara yeah, yeah, and exactly. Scarlett Johansson. That just made him look worse. Who is he? Pete Davidson. That made him look way worse. That is Pete Davidson on the screen, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, holding oh. hands and seeing, meeting Emily Ratajkowski outside of his apartment. By the way. Uh, puffer jacket, white t-shirt, and gray sweatpants. I was I just gonna say like, that you know it's over when they're dressing like each other. Like it's that is a <laughs> it's over. <laughs> that is a dick appointment if I've ever seen one. That is. Bro, that's dude, so gray yeah, sweatpants. You know dude, why you wear those? Because they come off dude, super look at easy. His face. Can you go back to that face? He's got that ten inch. Room, what bro. the fuck do you see in that? Um. Yeah. My my dad's dead. Yeah. Like his dad's dead. That's the only thing I know about him. He he uh, he quit SNL because of depression, and then he went to go fuck Kim Kardashian. To be How fair, can he be wh- sad? what if he's just funny and is relatable? Because he's kind of sloppy yeah, if, compared yeah, to Hollywood exactly. standards. Well, did you hear? How, did you hear yeah. how he got Kim Kardashian's interest? No. He like uh, stood her up from the SNL after party. She's like, "Oh my god, where's Pete Davidson?" Misleading information. And then she's like, "Oh my god, he's not here." I wanted to hear about this big dick energy. And then she texted him. He's like, I can't believe you're not here. He's like, yeah, it's not, I got better things to do. Yeah. Yeah, I got better things to do. That's it? All right. You told you told the story pretty well. Yeah. Is that true, right? Luis? Uh, there's an, every, every night after SNL Saturday Night Live uh, airs, there is an after party, which all the cast members and the host will go to and, and celebrate their their week of stress right so then of all the cast members everybody won except uh mr davidson and so that kim kardashian was like like oh she he doesn't want to hang out he doesn't want to party and like she texted him saying like why don't you come and he, like phil 80 percent of phil's <laughs> reference was correct except for the the stood up he didn't necessarily stand her up he kind of just didn't go and she was like, what the fuck? So yeah. he uh, is yeah, the sloppy guy. Yeah. He's the sloppy. Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah. And then, like, he dated yeah. Larry David's daughter, also super hot. He dated Kate Beckinshall, also super hot. Ariana Grande. I'm sure there's a, uh, I don't know if you want to look this up or whatever. I don't know if it's worth the time. I'm going to be like, honest. But, not, like, there, there's yeah, an yeah, interview. Yeah. It where, used where, to be entertaining. Now I'm worried for you that you know that many. Bro, there was an interview with him. Dude, it's. Exactly. My bro is collecting these girls like fucking Infinity Stones, dude. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, what is he trying to assemble? Hey, did you guys hear they're gonna send uh, this case to Harvard to study it? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? The curious yeah, case no, no, of I, Pete Davidson. It's just a I bunch gotta... of memes. It's like, dude, these numbers gotta be studied. <laughs> He's like Will Chamberlain numbers out here. <laughs> Dude, I mean, in terms of men, just with the like, bag, like Pete, have you guys seen the meme where it's like Pete Davidson one week after he gets into heaven, he's with Marilyn Monroe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I did see that. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. This dude is nuts, bro. If this was a like, different time. He would have fucked Cleopatra. Like, can you imagine the Pete Davidsons back in the old world? Can you imagine oh, like dude. Helen of Troy getting swiped by? <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> some jester, <laughs> some fucking f- clown. <laughs> oh god! 
Oh, here we go. Here we go. I'm, you know, I'm proud of our boy Pete. It gives unfunny dudes that have no charisma. Oh, actually, no. The only and thing that he has is a ugly. big dick. So, God, ten yeah. inches. Ten it inches. Just, it just proves what? that you can do anything and bag anyone as long as you have a ten inch dick. Yeah, yeah. But Dude, to Juan's point, I gotta agree with Juan. Mm-hmm. Like, he's probably just really funny and relatable, and like doesn't ha- has the Hollywood. I'm sorry, that's terrible pronunciation. Has the Hollywood status without the baggage? You know what I mean. And we are. Boom! Back. Okay. So, interesting thing happened to me this week. Uh, if you pull up the the chat that I sent, uh, so I'm on Twitter at like you know mid afternoon. It was like twelve thirty seven, and I see a tweet by uh, Bobby Lee, who is a very famous comedian, known for Tiger Belly, known for uh, two bad friends, and so I see he tweeted out. Hey guys, who wants a? If you click on the photo, that way it actually zoom extends. Um, if you click on the first one, um, you'll see he says, "Would love to donate uh, six hundred dollars to ten people. You can buy a back a MacBook through him." And he says, "DM me. My DMs are open." So I'm like, "Holy shit! I can buy a MacBook from Bobby Lee for six hundred dollars, and it's signed, right? Super sick." So I DM him saying, would love to donate to charity and win a MacBook in the process. Long time Bobby Lee fan, even longer Arsenal fan. He's an Arsenal fan also. So then he just texts back, okay, do you have Cash App? And I said, no, but I have PayPal and Venmo. And this is where I started getting kind of weirded out. And he goes, what about Zelle? So then I'm like, um, I made a Cash App if that's what you prefer, but I also have Zelle. And then he goes, let's do Zelle. What's your si- shipping address? And I did send it to him because I'm going to move out in a couple of weeks anyway. So I'm like, okay, let's see where this goes. And then he sends, awesome, send $600 to this number. That's my assistant. And then I'm like, what the fuck? But then I say, do you mean George, who's his assistant through Tiger Belly? And that's when I'm like, There's, this is obviously a scam. Like something's not right. But I was so close. So close to sending six hundred dollars to somebody scamming Bobby Lee, and yeah, he got hacked online. And there's been a bunch of Twitter hacks recently with Elon Musk taking over. Holy shit! Yeah, he would have got yeah. me because I looked at it. I was like, oh yeah, this is Bobby Lee. He joined in October two thousand and nine. This is yeah, the it's real his Bobby G. It's, it's yeah, it's his real Twitter account. But yeah, he just got hacked. Holy shit! Hey, good eye on you. You're like you. My assistant? You mean George? He's like, Fuck. I was like, what does he mean by my assistant? I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. And yeah, then I was like, you know, I be I shouldn't have sent him my address in the first place, but I was like, okay, like I'm gonna move out in a couple of weeks, no big deal. Yeah. Um. So I was like, oh, whatever. And yeah, turns out, don't trust anybody on Twitter. No, it, uh, I, I, a lot of hacks especially going on right, right now. now. Have you guys been keeping up with yeah. the Twitter shit and Elon Musk? Dude, it is a shit show light right now. Yeah. Yeah, very compromised at the moment. But I thought you were going to bring up by saying, like, in this current trend, I saw a, a particular piece on Vice on their YouTube. Vice News. Yeah. Uh, very popular. It doesn't hold the same prestige as it does as it did once, but I digress. Uh, they had a, a whole, like, 10 minute subject on fraudsters. People that, like, go to the black web, type in a bunch of, like, credit card information and, like, like live off of people's credit cards they like get their numbers what what they were saying in that uh youtube video from vice is that the very important thing to look at is the area code so they look at the area code and like determine if like it's from a wealthy neighborhood or what have you you know and they're like it's like a gamble for them they buy like bad credit cards you don't know what you're getting maybe you have a credit card that has like four thousand from someone's dude's bank account or B, you you get the lucky dude, unlucky dude that's like negative four hundred dollars, and you paid like an amount to get that information. So when you said that, I was like, oh, that makes sense because like they almost got our, our our brother over here, Luis, to get him six hundred dollars. They, they almost got me, and I looked up the area code and everything, and I'm like, this wouldn't make any sense. Like, I think the area code, if I remember, was from like Seattle or something. No. Yeah. So when I was. 
going through everything i'm like yeah this is kind of fucked up like uh so then yeah i reported the account and then yeah he, i think he ended up posting something on instagram the next day saying like my twitter's hacked i'm gonna try to follow up and let you guys know but i'm really sorry it's like dude they the scammer probably got a couple people because it was his real twitter account and he was like macbooks signed by me six hundred dollars and like it's something that bobby lee could do like he's constantly just i don't think he would give away shit like that but i don't know i thought you know the history of Bobby Christmas Lee, he does time. have manic episodes, so like maybe he was like a <laughs> like you know what, fuck everything. Fuck technology. Everything's gotta go. I'm going back to analog. Fuck digital. So like maybe you know Yeah. The true fans of Bobby Lee are like, Oh yeah, this is Bobby's Lee, you know, up his alley. <laughs> yeah, this is right up. <laughs> exactly. Going 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 out of sales sale or whatever. But, so yeah, be careful guys. Be careful on Twitter lately. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, how about we we finish up? I'm sure we're getting closer to the to our mark at the we moment. Are. Uh, how about we finish up with a nice, lighthearted subject? Since we talked about porn, talked about Wakanda forever. Oh uh, yeah. Let's finish us on on a nice lighthearted subject for everybody to to enjoy, and that's the tale of Batman, the tale of justice, the tale of doing what's right, even when your parents are dead. Have, do you have any uh, like? history with batman or like because like i know uh, Luis I, came and I, in, I came into it with the christopher nolan trilogy mm, i know Luis and i fucked heavy with batman just with our childhood and, and getting and back into each it other. and fucked heavy with each other i there's been a yeah. lot of fucking going on in this episode hey, yes 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 there has been yeah Damn yeah this is not i'm 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 i'm, I'm as a Catholic boy, I'm feeling very shameful. Very this, shameful of all this oh in this moment God, right now. Mm. Well, you know what? Did you know that Kevin Conroy was openly gay and actually had a husband? Kevin Conroy? That's probably why his yeah, voice was uh, so deep. It's just sucking on cum. Jesus just Christ. gargling it. All right, let's take that back. Did you guys know <laughs> that Kevin Conroy was openly gay? Wait, he was gay? Yeah, he was. Yeah. And actually, that's one of the things that attracted him about Batman. So he was a theatrical actor Mm -hmm. and was just trying to make ends meet. And so he knew that other actors would do voiceovers. And so when he read the script, he's like, oh, can I do like this side character, like um, the Commissioner Gordon or like Two-Face? And they were like, you know that if you audition for Batman, you'll be in every single episode and you'll get paid more. And he's like, oh, really? (laughs) Really? (laughs) took the role super seriously and he enjoyed the fact that Bruce Wayne had two faces was Bruce Wayne and then he was Batman at night so that's something he related to being a gay man like the first Batman cartoon was in I believe 1993 the animated series which he was um, where he got his start and yeah, after all he was a great voice actor and yeah it's, it just goes to show like he really took uh, the role seriously and related to him and you know, everybody, I think, was influenced by his Batman afterwards. It, that's bonkers to hear that he was, like, actively openly gay. Or was he openly gay or just concealed it until openly the end? Openly gay, yeah. Uh-huh. Was wow. even married, uh, even had a husband. Because, like, there's a... For those who know the Batman animated series, which, for a lot of people, that's, like, the trifecta of, like, good television, good animated shows that have a good story, that are fun for, you know, no matter what. And that's the Batman animated series, right? And uh, in the earlier seasons, there's the whole Two-Face arc, right? It's Harvey Dent before he becomes Two-Face. And canonically speaking, in the story, if you follow the story... He's got that beautiful blonde hair. Oh, I think he's like a ginger or some shit like that, right? But uh, Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent are like the best of friends, right? And it's spiraling down with Harvey Dent's like craziness. He's like, he doesn't trust anybody. His friends are betraying him. He's running for mayor, or DA, he's running for DA. He's like, oh, you know, the mob is out to get me. I'm, you know, I don't have anyone I can trust. And throughout the whole, you know, there's a two part uh, episode series. It's like an hour long. The first part is like Bruce Wayne's like, Harvey, you, I got a secret too. It's like very like alluding to the fact that Batman is gay. Like Bruce Wayne is gay. Because like Bruce Wayne can't say that he's Batman, right? So the whole like, the two part uh, episode is like, I have a secret too, Harvey. 
and like says like Harvey, if you can talk to anybody, talk to me. I have a secret as well. He keeps like referring to like says like Harvey, we're the best. Can you pull that up? If you look up the YouTube videos, it's like Harvey Dent and Bruce Wayne. Luis, it's so where, funny. Where can you stream this show? Or oh, the HBO series? Max. Uh, you can watch every episode of the Batman anime series on HBO Max. There's some really big, like, monumental Batman episodes that, I mean, change, like, the series. You know, like, Harley Quinn wasn't in the comics. Like, she was a character that was made in the TV show and now is, like, a big part of Batman as a whole. So, um, God, she's a big part of dc in general because like james yeah, gunn exactly. and the suicide squad god but um yeah, i mean i highly recommend uh people to watch some of those episodes there's like the one about uh, uh victor freeze and like his storyline and how he was like some crazy dude um but yeah there's i mean the oh. mask of the phantasm which was an animated series was great uh animated movie i should say um but yeah the one that phil was talking about was second chance uh, it explores Batman and Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent and why he's one of the best villains. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sins of Father, The Demon's Quest, uh, Almost Got Him. These are just some of the episodes that Heart of Ice is the one that I'm talking about. That one's just phenomenal, just as a TV show. And, you know, I think uh, Juan Legend and, and Leo, you guys have kind of dipped your toes into some like superhero stuff. And I think if you watch that show, you'll appreciate what it is, not just for of its time, but the storytelling that it has. So, um, you know, the listeners can maybe relate to the character of, of Batman and Bruce Wayne, and then you get to understand Kevin Conroy's journey as, as a gay man and relate to the fact that sometimes we all have secrets and they're not very easy to, to cope with. So, um, yeah, I think it's a, it's a good way to end the episode. Um, final thoughts on the wine? On the wine? Yes. Can I ask you for your final thoughts on something else instead of the wine? Yeah, of because course. I'll just give you quick thoughts on the wine. Um, dry, not very acidic, kind of round, creamy, um, but dry overall, uh, and not in a like great complex way. Kind of simple. But moving on from that, I wanted to ask you, Luis, uh, your final thoughts on. And I hate to bring it back and totally switch the subjects. Like yeah, Batman, because I had a sorry about Batman. I want to get back into. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Wait, Luis. Phil. Luis, I know. Moving, moving on, on, Phil. Moving on. Moving on, Phil from Batman. What, what, we're I, gonna we're gonna have to get my talk last about breakup. This. I spent a whole depression since watching Batman on HBO Max, which was like a year and a half ago. So, like, I'm telling you, Batman the animated series has gotten me out of the hole. Fair. Big time. Fair. All right. Beautiful. When I got back from Thailand, all I played, which is pretty bad, by the way, unemployed. I was like, I can go back to the place where I was before, but I wasn't ready yet. So I spent the whole time playing the Batman Arkham games, getting caught up, and I would n- have not done it any other way. <laughs> Honestly, I love Batman. God damn. All the right. Kevin Conroy is I definitely I do recommend missed. those games, though. The Batman Arkham fair, games. Fair, fair. Super fun games. All right, beautiful. What about you, Luis? Do you have a childhood like that or no? We we already went through a lot of Batman stuff. All right, we're going to move on. Because we, ra- we were already wrapping it Bro, up. Bro, he's gay. Is it because he's gay? Oh, oh my if he was straight, you would talk about Batman, right? Phil, we were literally this close to wrapping it up, you, except for like you like Batman when he was straight, but now that you found I, out that he was openly gay, it's different. I asked where you could stream it for a reason, buddy. HBO Max. I thought you were thank off. You. No, no, but thank you. Um, I did want to go back to one one thing from last week because, like, you guys did the favor of not spoiling for me. Um, the Ultimate Drink Masters. What did you guys think about the the fina- uh, finalists? Like, what were your overall opinions on like the Ooh. final in general? Yeah, let's uh, let's do a, a quick uh, a quick round. Um, I genuinely liked it. I thought the show as a whole stood really well, and I think each episode gets better as it goes on because the competition gets harder. I think the better bartenders are the ones that stay the longest, and I think overall. Um, any of the three that would have won at the end, uh, that being Tao, LP, and um, I forget the Kate. last uh, female's names. Kate? Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, Kate, LP, and the Tao. Um, 
I thought all three of them were phenomenal. And I, I wasn't upset that um, LP won. I thought she was a very good bartender, but I think there was points in the contest where they were a little bit easier on her than some of the others. Um, specifically, just to mention it because it was very obvious, was oh the Kate color round. Say, oh, the color round. She completely fucked that up. And also, Kate had said it were episode seven in the competition. People are still making milk punches. Like, where's the creativity? Where's the diversity of drinks? And then LP gets uh, a very clear run with using a milk punch, and I'm like. Okay, I'm like I know Kate was throwing shade, but at the same time, like she's got a point. Like we're, you've seen all these elaborate, interesting cocktails, and then they're just gonna put out like a shitty one. Like I don't, you know, I didn't think that was necessarily fair. I think she was a great bartender, but you gotta judge everybody equally. What did L- you think? LP won only because she's a descendant of the Princess Shooty. We gotta represent Wakanda forever. Goddamn film. God damn. Wakanda forever. You know what? One last thing about Wakanda forever. The <laughs> thing that pissed me off the most about it no, we're was not. the fact no. that she kept dropping her accent when she was talking to the chick from Brooklyn or Massachusetts. Okay. She's like, my, bring, bring my, it back to the drink show. Bring it back. My ancestors. Bring it back. I bet you LP's ancestors were, bring was, it back. were pissed. She's like, we trust you better in our tribe. And now you make drinks for the colonizers in the New York. That's, prob- that's well. probably what happened with LP. She's like, I'm so sorry, my ancestors. Please, okay. personally. Right. Fine. Fine. Uh, well, anyways, Luis, I was going to say, personally, um, I I love I love the show. I, I think it's going to be like the start of a genre. Like, I, I hope that after this, there's like a whole like host of shows that are basically the same thing with di- different approaches to it, different uh, ways at uh, doing it. Um, but yeah, I, I think it should have been done fucking 10 years ago. Like how has this not been done before? And maybe I'm ignorant and it has been, and I just haven't been exposed to it. Uh, but yeah, um, I loved it. I did also agree with the idea that the best, uh, or most talented bartenders were usually the ones that stayed in. Um, except for like a few, I wanted to see, um, the one Indian dude, like a little bit longer. I feel like there was probably more talent to be explored with that guy. Um, other than that, though, pr- I pretty much agree with like how everybody got eliminated. Um, I I kind of wanted to see Tao win because um, I I thought like he had the most uh, avant garde uh, way of approaching bartending. Like he literally made like. Um, what's it called? French bread liqueur. Like you talking about the pretentious Puerto Rican? He n- no. That was Alex. That no, was Alex. Dow had used a method of distilling. Yeah, he that. distilled French bread and made a liqueur with it, and then he used it in his drink. I, and was by the way had failed I think two times before the final, and Tao was the only guy to who his had guns. Him. Yeah, stuck to his guns and was like, "I'm using this thing again. Like I'm gonna get it to work." and committed to it and it kind of burned him a few times but no nah, man he was i i thought he was going to win also i thought he was a very good bartender but like i said like i think all three of them at the end were phenomenal um it was just impressive to see the drink that like you said it, it should have been a, a a 10 year ago uh, show but you really can see the evolution of bartending isn't just like spirit in a mixer now it's like it's it's culinary like they say in the show yep Totally agree. Dude, I, I convinced the people at, or the manager to get us a still so we can try, like, fucking making some French bread or, or croissant liqueurs and shit like that. It's only $100. That dollars. That's not bad. You can fucking <laughs> buy one from home. For home. For some yeast in your liquor? You don't, that sounds no, really good. Yeah, you you can, just take bread you can and make water. Like, like, yeah, you can take, like olives you yeah. can make like an olive liqueur you can make almond liqueur like you just gotta distill it it's insane the process is crazy but if you're brave enough and talented enough you could really make some cool shit so you're saying i can make barbecue yeah exactly Flavored barbecue wine barbecue rib yeah, liqueur dude. like a barbecue rib yeah. old-fashioned yeah now we're talking now we're talking <laughs> now, we're talking. now, now we're we got talking. his attention all right, any uh, last few notes? Any, uh, Leo, uh, any last comments? 
No, well, I haven't finished the show, but I'm gonna finish it. Sounds pretty interesting, though. At the same time, <laughs> dude, we just spoiled it. <laughs> nah, you don't oh, gotta. You, like, nah, 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 you're good. You don't I, watch I, it. Like, I like the creativity aspect, but I never know what they're actually doing, just because most of the time, like I said, I just I get a cold beer. Yeah, give me a PBR. <laughs> don't give me food that's served out the of a trash can. Beer and we're set. <laughs> I don't want you to sit there and like it. puree tomatoes. <laughs> just give me my drink, please. <laughs> Says the guy that goes like, to five bar. I don't want you to use like three different cups. All I need is a bottle opener. And that's it. <laughs> exactly. Like, give me a fucking can opener and let's get, let's get <laughs> hand me a Bud Light. Let's How much is a, a is a bucket of, of a six pack? Oh god, that's hilarious. Yeah, bro. For oh, the right, I love it, Leo. The cooled light, cool hams. You can get a fucking thirty two pack for four bucks. Back in Donald Trump's America, brother. Ooh, back then, brother. Back then, brother. Got and with mouth, that bro. being said, guys, it's been a great episode. Thank you, bud. It's it's probably not our cleanest. Probably the dirtiest. I disagree. I, I, yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. But uh, gentlemen, uh, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy great, Thanksgiving, cool, everyone. Mm-hmm. And enjoy with your friends and family. And, and uh, uh, we'll see you all next week. See you all next week.